Good morning. This is my analysis of the lab labor case of Raymond Jim Sola as the petitioner versus New City Builders Incorporation and Engineer Ernel Fajardo as the respondent with the GR 207613. My analysis has four parts. First, on the evidence and facts of the petitioner and respondents. Second, on all the relevant claims and counterclaims made by the petitioner and the respondent and how these claims are accepted and decided by the courts. Third, on my analysis, how the decisions of the different level of courts contributed and the sound judgment of this case. And the last, I will give my opinions based on the regular, regulatory framework and legal issues and relate it to the case. For the first part, the evidence and facts of the petitioner. Mr. Mensola believes that he is a regular employee as his work being a laborer or mason was necessary and desirable to new city's construction business. He, he pointed out that he worked for new city builders for more than one year, specifically for 13 months and thereby automatal, automatically he assumed that this bestowed upon him a regular employment status. Mr. Mansola was initially hired as a laborer for the structural phase of the Avida tree from December 16, 2008 until August 24, 2009. Upon the completion of the structural phase, he was again employed on August 25, 2009 by the new city builders. This time, the architectural phase of the same project, but without the execution of another contract fixing the term of his employment. He further asserts the new city's act of the forcing him to sign an employment contract is a scheme to preclude him from acquiring permanent employment status. On August 25, 2009, New City rehired Mensola as Amazon for the architectural phase of the Abida tree, but without another contract fixing on the date of his employment. In December 2009, upon reviewing Mensola's employment record, New City noticed that Mensola had no appointment paper as Amazon for the architectural phase. New City instructed Mensola to update his employment record. However, Mensola ignored New City's instruction and continued to work without an appointment paper. On January 20, 2010, Mansola was again summoned to the office of New City to sign his appointment paper. Mansola refused to comply and stormed out of the office and never reported back of work. For the second part, these are the relevant claims and counterclaims made by the petitioner and the respondent and how these claims are accepted and decided by the courts. The petitioner, Minsola's claims were on January 26, 2010, he filed a complaint for illegal dismissal, underpayment of salary, non-payment of 13th month pay, separation pay, and refund of cash ban. These are all cited and reference numbers 11 and 12. He claimed that he was a regular employee of New City as he rendered work for more than one year. 
and that his work as a laborer or as a son is needed and desired by new city's business. He claimed that he was constructively dismissed by new city. Parenthetically, as mentioned in reference number 50, constructive dismissal, or also known as a dismissal in disguise, where there is a cessation of work because continued employment is rendered impossible, unreasonable, or unlikely as an offer involving decrease in pay and other benefits. In simpler terms, there seems to be an act of clear discrimination, insensibility, or disdain by an employer that it becomes very unbearable on the part of the employee, that it leaves him with no other choice but to forego his continued employment. On the other hand, the respondent New City's counterclaims were as cited in reference numbers 34 and 35. New City Builders counters that Mensola was hired as a project employee to work as a laborer for the constructural phase. And after the termination of that employment contract, as Amazon for the architectural phase of the Abida 3, his tasks as a laborer were completely different from his tasks as Amazon. In this regard, his subsequent rehiring as Amazon cannot be considered as a continuation of his former employment contract as a laborer. Furthermore, the simple fact that his employment has gone beyond one year does not automatically convert his employment status to a regular employee. Finally, New City maintains that the company did not illegally dismiss Mensola from his work, nor did it prevent Mensola from reporting for work. Now, as to the aspect of how these claims and counterclaims are accepted and decided by the courts, I will present the end to three major points. First, whether or not Mensola was a project employee. Second, whether or not Mensola was constructively or illegally dismissed by New City. And the third, whether or not Mensola is entitled to his monetary claim. There were four levels of rolling involved. First, the rolling of labor arbiter on October 8, 2010, Mensola's complaint of being illegally terminated from his employment was rejected for lack of evidence. That it was, actually, Mensola was stopped reporting for work after he was instructed by the new city builders to sign and update his employment record in December 2009. This was cited in reference numbers 13 to 15. However, the labor arbiter ordered the new city to pay Mensola for this 13th month pay differentials of 2,652 pesos and to reinstate Mensola to his work until the completion of the architectural phase of the project. This was cited in reference numbers 16 and 17. All other monetary claims of Mensola were dismissed for lack of evidence. Second, the National Labor Relations Commission or NLRC on 
April 29, 2011, reversed the labor arbiters ruling, as cited and reference number 19. The NLRC found that Mansola was a regular employee and was illegal terminated from his employment. The NLRC are also noted that Mensola's job as a laborer or a mason was needed and desired to the usual business of the new city. And thus, an LRC ordered the new city to reinstate Mensola and pay him full back wages from January 10, 2010 until his actual reinstatement. The NLRC awarded Mensola's monetary claims of salary differentials from his salary of only 260 pesos per day to the minimum wage of 382 pesos per day and in a total amount of 41,616 pesos and 64 cents. Leave pay differentials of 310 pesos, holiday pay, and attorney fees of 10%. To the total monetary award, all of this are cited and reference numbers 23 to 26. The third the new city builders filed a motion for reconsideration, which was denied by the NLRC, and thus the new city builders filed a petition under Rule 65 of the revised rules of the court with the Court of Appeal or CA. The ruling of the CA on December 21, 2012, reversed the decision of the National Labor Relations Commission. The CA reinstated the ruling of the labor arbiter as cited and reference number 13. Fourth, the distressed Mansola filed a motion for reconsideration, which was denied by the Court of Appeal as cited and reference number 31. Not discouraged, Mensola filed a petition under Rule 65 of the Revised Rules of Court, seeking the reversal of the Court of Appeal decision. The ruling of the Court The Court does not thermally embark in the evaluation of the evidence presented by the lower tribunals. However, there are exceptions. One of these is when the findings of fact of the judicial agencies and contradictory with those of the CA. In such case, it is an obligation of the court to re-examine the facts once again. This is stipulated in reference number 36. As to the aspect of whether or not Mansola is a regular employee, the court decided that he is not, but that Mansola is clearly only a project employee of the new city builders. This is based on the Article 294 of the Labor Code, and there were two similar examples cited, as mentioned in reference numbers 42 and 44. The next aspect of whether Mansola was illegally dismissed from his employment, the court decided that he was not. Mansola failed to show evidence that he was actually dismissed or terminated from his employment. Neither did he allege that his continued employment with New City was rendered impossible, unreasonable, or unlikely, nor was demote, demoted or made to suffer from any act of discrimination or disdain. Neither was there any single allegation 
that she was prevented or birth from returning to work. On the contrary, it was actually Mansola who stormed out of New City's office and refused to report for work. The last aspect on monetary claims, the evidence to show proof of these monetary claims, salary differentials, 13 month pay differentials, service incentive leave pay differentials, holiday pay and attorney's fees is shifted between Mensola and the new city. In claims for payment of salary differential, service incentive leave, holiday pay and 13th month pay, the burden rests on the employer, new city to prove payment. On the other hand, for over, overtime pay, premium pays for holidays and rest days, the burden is shifted on the employee as these monetary claims are not incurred in the normal course of business. The record shows that Mansola was given a daily wage of 260 pesos per day as shown by his employment contract dated December 16, 2008. This amount falls below the minimum wage of 382 pesos per day, mandated by wage order number NCR-15, effective August 28, 2008 to June 30, 2010. Clearly, Mansola is entitled to salary differentials from December 16, 2008 until January 19, 2010, in the amount of 41,616 pesos and 64 cents. Mansola is entitled to leave pay differentials in the amount of 310 pesos as the amount of service incentive leave pay he received on December 19, 2009 was only 1,600 pesos instead of 1,900 pesos. He is also entitled to a 13th month pay differential of 2,652 pesos. Moreover, Mensula is entitled to a holiday pay of 5,340 pesos for two unworked legal holidays in December 2008, 11 unworked legal holidays in 2009, and one legal holiday in January 2010. As New City failed to present the payrolls that would show that Mensola's salary was inclusive of holiday pay. On the other hand, Mensola's claims for premium pay for holiday and rest day as well as night shift differential pay are denied for lack of factual basis. Finally, Mensola should likewise be awarded attorney's fees as the instant case includes a claim for an unlawfully withheld wages. All of these are recited in reference numbers 53 to 60. The decision dated December 21, 2012 of the Court of Appeals is modified by awarding petitioner Raymond G. Mensola his salary differentials, service incentive, leave pay differentials, holiday pay, and 10% attorney's fees. In addition to his 13th month pay differential awarded by the appellate court, the labor arbiter is ordered to prepare a comprehensive accounting of all monetary claims pursuant to this 
cards rolling. The third part of my analysis is on how the decision of the different level of cards contributed in the sound judgment of this case. The four levels of rolling showed a democratic and a fair process in hearing the petitioner and the respondent clearly and giving them the chance to petition for reversal of decisions at each level. The Court of Appeal has also appealed its obligation that in case of conflicting decisions between the judicial levels and the CA, the Court takes a re-examine the facts once again. Based on the evidence, records from the records from both petitioner and respondent as well as the cited references of the labor codes and pertaining examples of similar previous cases. I open that the court decisions on Mensola and the new city builders are sound judgment, particularly on the right of an employer to hire project employees for as long as the employees are clearly informed of the nature and terms of their employment. There were examples given, particularly for construction companies, as cited in reference numbers 43 and 45, that although the land of service provides a fair yardage for determining when the, an employee initially hired on a temporary basis becomes a permanent one. Entitled to the security and benefits of regularization, this standard will not be fair to be applied to the construction industry simply because construction firms cannot guarantee work and funding for its payrolls beyond the life of each project. Construction companies have no control over the decision and resources of project proponents or owners. There is no construction, construction company that does not wish it has such control, but the reality presumably understood by construction workers is that work depended on decisions and developments over which construction companies have no say. Finally, I will give my opinions based on the regulatory framework and legal issues and relate it to the case. The basic assumption that Mensola has taken is that he thinks he was a regular employee merely because his work was continuous. Simply by reading the entire case, I can assume that Mensola did not have a clear understanding of his employment status. I may also guess that he was probably advised or influences, for example, by a labor union lawyer. A lawyer may also have conflict of interest in terms of fees, which is a certain percentage of monetary claims. To avoid this kind of conflict, the employer or employers is as which is uh, has the responsibility to put themselves in the shoes and level of understanding of the laborers that it is the employer's responsibility to clarify the status of the laborer's nature of employment. Right at the start, when the laborers signed their employment contracts, which must be before the start of the actual workday, the laborer must also be given the legal wages and benefits they are entitled to. While it is true that the construction businesses have no control over the decisions and resources of project proponents or owners, cannot guarantee work and funding for its payrolls beyond the life of each project. 
and thus it is common for them to rehire laborers on contractual basis. The employer's projects in charge should have the empathy to relate to the level of their laborers and be truly concerned of employees, rights to know and understand the nature and status of their employment term using the language level that they can understand. Every employer has to be kind in taking care of their employers, particularly those who are at the lowest level who have the heaviest physical works and employers should not only think of minimum profit but the well-being of their workers. Such conflicts like this case of Mensola and New City Builders can be avoided. That had employee clearly understood his employment status and that rehiring, although continuous in time, did not automatically mean regular employment status. Transparency of labor rules and regulations and awareness of the laborers' rights should be given by the employers, explained in understandable layman's terms. For in this process, employees will trust their employers and avoid suspicions on possible cheating scheme, like what Mensola was suspecting on the rehiring scheme, instead of the truth that construction business may not be able to afford employment of regular laborers. Employees have the right to know and understand from their employers their rights as a company workers from the very beginning and regularly through, for example, yearly meetings, especially on the right to know the nature and the status of their terms of employment and benefits. Thank you, and this is all about this case.